Hi y'all, it's Mimsy here. Are you thinking about making a swinging bed for your porch or patio? This swinging bed is super easy and super simple. I built it in an afternoon. That includes going to Home Depot, picking up the lumber, bringing it home, cutting it and assembling the whole thing. I did it in a matter of a couple hours. It's really easy. All the materials cost me just a little bit over $100, not including the rope. I did already have the rope but all the lumber, the mattress, the hardware, the eye hooks for the ceiling and the carriage bolt eye hooks for the outside. So if you're thinking about making a swinging bed, this is the tutorial for you. It's a quick down and dirty tutorial, but make sure that you stick around to the end because at the end, I give you some really good tips on the easiest way to hang the bed and um, just a couple other little tips that you'll definitely want to know before you start making your swinging bed. So let's get started. Okay, so first, first things first, I cut all my lumber. Now a twin size mattress is 75 inches long by 30, Eight or 39 wide I can't remember but anyway you can look that up on Google so I I cut my frame my two by threes to be exactly that dimension so that um, when I put the one buys on the outside that would basically frame out the mattress so I cut everything on my chop saw quick and easy I put two stainless steel two and a half inch screws on each end I made sure to pre-drill those holes so I didn't split any of my wood and then I cut some short pieces at 45s to go in the corners in order to make sure that my frame was squared up and again I pre-drilled holes and put two two and a half inch screws on each corner to hold those corner pieces I do have a tip at the end of the video make sure you watch till the end to see the tip about those corner pieces which is pretty important so so watch to the end if you're thinking of building this method then i cut my toggles or stringers basically to go um down down the center of the the frame in order to support the mattress and i did those approximately every 12 inches i didn't even measure i just eyeballed that um, and then, of course, secured those with the two and a half inch screws, two on each pre-drilling so I didn't split any wood. That's very important to pre-drill, otherwise you will split your wood. And I used my speed square to square up those pieces so that they were all nice and square. So make sure you grab out your speed square. And then I cut and attached my one by sixes to make the whole thing look pretty. So I just, you know, set, measured and, and cut my one by sixes. And then I attached those with uh, shorter screws down, down the sides. And then of course I will fill all those screw heads with wood putty or wood filler. So I'm just attaching those and um, yeah, you could wood glue them I actually did not, but you could glue them to make it all nice and nice and sturdy and, and tight. And then now I'm cutting the pieces for the arms on each end. I used one by fours for this, and I cut them 14 inches tall so that it would just be tall enough to go over the top of the mattress so I could set a coffee cup or a drink cup on, on, on the arm of the on the arm of the bed. I do show this a little bit more in detail, this this part, um, a little bit later in the video. Okay, so I've got the bed all constructed. I put the arm pieces on. I got a mattress and now I'm painting. So I'm going to paint a coat and then sand and then paint another coat because the first coat raises the grain a bit. So I'm gonna sand that down and then I'll put another coat or two on there. And then I'll put in the hooks and I put hooks up on the ceiling already. Um, so then I'll grab my rope and hang this baby. Um, and then I will have to make a cover for the mattress and some pillows for the bed. But I wanted to show you how I did the corner pieces real quick. So. I um, attached a one by on this side and a one by here, and then this is the one by on the top. So I need to fill those holes better. 
But anyway, this one is overlapping this one. Does that make sense? So that this one is the same size. And then you can go as detailed as you want. I bought the one by twos because I was going to go with the one by twos across the bottom for an added detail, but I think I may not even do that. So I'm sanding the first coat of paint because the first coat of paint on raw wood always raises the grain. You see how the grain is, the grain like puffs up because it's water-based paint. And so if I were to put another coat of paint on top of here without sanding it, it would just stay the same and you'd always see that kind of raised grain, which is a look, but not the one I want. I want it to look really smooth. I buy cheap lumber, you know, just number two grade lumber, um, and then I have to sand. However, even if you were to buy number one grade lumber, better lumber, you'd, you'd still have raised grain, so. And see, here it is after I've sanded it. I used 400 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander and that's how it looks but it's nice and smooth now so now when i put on a second coat this will look like super smooth so this is how i did the eye hooks with the bolts i put a washer and then a bolt and i just made sure that my eye bolt was you know parallel to the ground so that my my knot would come up right underneath there so when i drilled I just, you know, made sure that my bolt was coming through the center of that two by three, which that one's actually towards the bottom. But this one over here, I managed to get that one perfectly in the center. And I'm tightening it down with this ratcheting wrench. Ugh, this one I'm gonna have to actually get a wrench for because it's too, these corner things are too close into, this one is anyway, those two aren't. And this one was fine, but that one's too far. Darn it. Okay, so you see how there's no room to get the ratcheting around. I'm gonna have to just get a wrench and put that in there, but that's okay, no big deal. So when you, big tip, when you make this, make sure you make this piece longer so it'll be out here, like this one, so that you can get your thing of a jig in there. And I don't know if I talked about the bucket approach to hanging the, the bed, but the buckets are perfect because you can set your bed up on the buckets and then tie your knots underneath. What I did is, and I've already let this down a couple times so it settled a bit, but I tied my knots so they would be right up underneath the eye bolt and then once you let it down then your bed settles and all of your knots will tighten up and the bed will lower about six inches then the bed then it's the perfect height so just the homer buckets are perfect for this part for the hanging part what i would suggest is tie your top knots and then hang on them swing on them push them up and just really pull on both sides to get the top knots to really tighten up and then go ahead and tie your bottoms so that you don't have to undo and retie like I'm having to do. Okay, one more quick thing about this. So there's my mattress. So this mattress was given to me, um, so it was free. And the bottom of the mattress, it's not, this is not a double-sided mattress. Most of them, I guess probably high quality mattresses are double-sided, I don't know. But this one's technically not double-sided. So the bottom of this mattress has a layer of foam, as you can see there, and it's a firm, a very firm foam. So this is the bottom and can only be the bottom. The top is a pillow top and has a whole different plush type feel to it. So when I planned this bed, I put these supports in here every uh, 12 inches and I thought that I would have to put like a piece of plywood there a bunky board type of a thing like on a bunk bed but because the mattress has such a firm foam when I put the mattress on here it doesn't even need a bunky board or well, I, I had bought a piece of flooring underlayment quarter inch plywood that's like 14 bucks and I was gonna cut that and put it in here and I may still do that just for extra security because it's super light and it's not gonna add any more weight to the bed and it'll just stabilize it up a little bit more even. So I will probably still do that, but it's really actually not necessary with this type of mattress. So just another quick thing.